In this video, we'll look at EQ, or equalization. EQ means the relative levels of frequencies. It is one of the most fundamental processes in music production, and it's going to be really useful for you to learn this skill. So filters are one type of EQ. Make sure you check out our filter video. Our ears can detect a wide range of frequencies, roughly from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, or 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. And most graphic EQs will show you that range. In Soundtrap's parametric EQ effect, there are three parameters, frequency, gain, and Q, also called resonance. Let's take a look at what those mean and how to control them. Let's first look at how to add an EQ effect. We'll first go to add effect, and you can choose between equalizer and parametric EQ. Keep in mind, filters are also EQs, but there's a separate video on that, so we'll leave that aside for now. I've selected both parametric EQ and equalizer, so we can look at them both together. You'll notice on the parametric EQ that there are three sections, or three poles. There's the low frequency section that has controls for that frequency, gain for that, and Q. Similarly, mid frequencies have frequency control, gain, and Q, and same with highs. Down here is an overall volume control. So on the parametric EQ, there are three poles, or three sections, whereas on this equalizer effect, there are 10. If you're brand new to EQ, it might be hard to understand what each of these do. So I have a visualization on the bottom part of the screen to help you understand each parameter. This first knob here controls exactly what low frequencies are being affected. As I bring it down, you can see how this changes. And as I bring it up, you can see what that looks like. The gain controls not what frequencies are being changed, but how much they're being changed by. And this third knob is Q, or resonance, which controls how wide or narrow the range is. Another way you can understand Q can be visualized here. If I have a high frequency Q set to very high, that basically means that a very small band of frequencies are being affected. Whereas if I had it low, a wider range would be affected. It lo might look something like this. Now that you've gotten a few visual examples, let's listen to see how these EQ changes affect the sound. Let's listen to what it sounds like without any changes. And really, in this stage, the parametric EQ is not doing anything. But now, let's turn up the gain on the high frequencies. You'll hear it start to get brighter. And I might even make it higher, so I'm affecting a higher group of frequencies. Start to hear that kind of hiss, and it's brighter. I could go extra wide. Or I could go very narrow. Let's set that back to normal. And you're really going to hear it in the mid-range, because this particular instrument, which is a hand pan, has a lot of its frequencies in the mid-range. So if I boost the mids, you start to hear that. It's actually distorting because they're so loud. I can change the frequency of those mids. So I can hear maybe some of the higher mids. It's instead of the lower mids. And let's turn that gain down so it doesn't distort. Now let's hear what happens if we cut them entirely. Might even cut the highs too. So this would basically be like a low pass filter. Let's set those back to normal. And let's listen to the lows. If I change only the some of the higher lows, not the super lows, because there aren't really many super low frequencies in this sound. I boost those. Sounds like that. And again, it's distorting just because I'm boosting them too much. And I might cut them, and it's going to make it sound thinner. The low end, the body of the sound is gone now. So that was a brief introduction into EQ. I would highly recommend that you go into Soundtrap and start adding EQ effects to your tracks and experimenting to get a better feel and understanding for how you can use it.